What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In this one, we're going to look at all the new doors within Twinmotion 2020.2. If you're not familiar with that update, I do have a video for all the new updates in Twinmotion 2020.2. There were quite a lot, one of them being doors, what we can do with doors, the fact that there are now new doors within Twinmotion and some of the animations that they have. We're gonna look at all of those settings in just a second. If at any point in this video you happen to learn something or just like the video, please demolish that like button. It really helps me out a lot. Also, consider consider changing the face of that subscribe button to existing. It makes such a difference and helps me out so much. So let's get into it now. I'm in just a blank twin motion project, and we're gonna start to go and look at all these new doors. Where are we where can we find these doors? We can find the doors in objects, and then you'll notice here at the very bottom there's a new section doors. It's just doors. And we've got rotating doors and sliding doors. And we're going to take a look at both. But let's start at rotating doors. I mean, these are great. So it's like, it's, in theory, a lot of different types of doors that you might need for any kind of project. And these are just what Twinmotion provides. And I'm sure we'll at least hopefully have more doors to choose from in the future. But really, let's just choose any door. So let's drag this door in and see what we've got. So immediately, whenever I drag the door in, we see we've got this, this blue outline, this blue circle outline. We see a little door icon there in the center, really only indicating that this is a door. And then we have lots of different settings that we can work with, with it, which is great. So let's first start with the settings. So I've got style five in this case. And so if I, I click that, I can see essentially all the styles that I had to choose from when I was originally going to place the door. Okay, not a big deal. You know, if you want to quickly change this door style, it this happens there. But we have a more button, which is great. So when I click more, we get we get a lot more details here. So I've got a handle style and we've got style one. We've got all these different types of handles. Like we've even got a crash bar, which is amazing. And you know, obviously you need these crash bars if you have a path of egress that has 50 or more people and you know everything like that. We've got plenty of this and it's nice to see something like this built into twin motion. We've got really these nice door pools that are pretty common nowadays. There's all kinds of different handles. This is awesome. Having the flexibility to do this is great. And then we've, we've simply got hinges on or hinges off. You can see them up here toggling on and off. Okay. Not a big deal, but you know, nice. If you want things to look a little more simplistic, maybe turn them off, but I am probably just going to leave them on because it adds another element of detail that you, you're not seeing. We've got the casing style. Again, we're, it's really great that we have all the different levels of detail here that we can start to introduce into the door itself. And you can see as I change the casing style that this does impact the look of our frame here. And it's really helpful that we're even seeing this and have this option. It's more than I would have expected in something like twin motion, but, <laughs> but I've quickly learned that twin motion is continuously providing me with a lot more value than I would have ever expected. So if we look at casing style, there's even a more option here. And so <laughs> I can take this even a step further in changing the width of the frame itself. So if I want to make that 0.5 and like really half a foot, six inches. If you want a dramatic looking frame, it's the same here with the thickness. We can really make the thickness different there. And well, that's more of the depth than the thickness itself. So a lot of customization that you can do per door. And now I want to do no, you know, as I'm making all these changes to this door, you know, you know what, what can we do as far as making this change universal? Well, I'm going to go ahead and place another one of these doors in here. And we can see that more than likely, we're going to have all the defaults of that door. And sure enough, we are. So in a sense, these doors are different. You know, I've made changes to this one door and not the second door. I'm going to delete this one for now. We're going to come back to changing, you know, uh, multiple doors with these settings. And I'm, we're going to say that after we look at all the settings of the doors. So we've looked at, this, at the, the style of the door. You know, you can change that. I'm actually going to undo those frame dimensions because it looks a little funny. So now here we are, we're down into this trigger. Now trigger is kind of different and this may be not something you're used to seeing, but a door, this door trigger is actually this blue 
line that we see outlining the door in this this circle. It's around the door. The door is in the center of the circle, indicating that this is some kind of trigger. Now, the idea is that this this at this point, once the user or other users or other characters pass this point, that this will trigger the door to open. So this is another. This is a part of the animation that goes into the door. It's built in. You don't have to deal with it yourself. But it's really nice that it's it's that simple. So if we go into trigger, we have trigger open or close. And so right now it's set to trigger in that it is currently set to trigger the animation of opening and closing as I come within the circle and then leave the circle. Now, if I were to just click open, this is just going to remain open. And, you know, maybe there is some value in that. Maybe you just want all your doors to be open all the time. There's nothing wrong with that. And close, you know, this is what we kind of would expect with most doors. It's just closed. There's no animation as I walk up to it nothing's there. And you'll notice that there is no animation or will be no animation because we don't see that blue line. Now, when I come in here and click more, this is this is where we have all the different options for the trigger itself. And you'll see that these settings will impact this blue line in a way to impact the animation of the door. So right now, the trigger radius is default at 9.8 feet. So we can make this, you know, four feet and we can see the reduction there. And on and really, as I get closer to the door, nothing's going to happen until I get within that area of the circle. Then it, then it will open. Now, I you wouldn't like that so much because it's not natural. And if you want to continuously walk through in an animation or something like that or a presentation, you would need the trigger to be larger, uh, the radius to be larger so that the door opens sooner. And so it's not so awkward. Now, we can drag this up and, you know, it can be ridiculously high to where, you know, even if I enter this area at all, it, you know, the door is open and basically ready for me to walk through. I believe our max is, you know, 32, 33 feet, which, you know, in my mind is big enough. This is plenty of time to walk through. And the nice thing is this actually does work as you walk. So as I enter this circle, the door will open. It's perfect. And then I'm easily able to walk through just fine. And as I leave the circle, it closes easy enough. We can also look at the type. I'll reduce this so we can see it a little better. If we look at the trigger type, currently it's set at multi. And so multi, meaning that, you know, as I fly in, I can see it. Or as I walk in, I can see that the animation of the door will go off. And so multi means I have multiple of these check markers. And I have the options of camera, character path, and custom path actors. Camera is just me just tooling around like this, you know, as my camera enters the space, enters the circle, the door will open. Makes sense. And then character path is, if you've seen one of my previous videos as well, we've got, we, I've done videos on all the different paths. And so you might have a character, for example, that is on a path that you set up yourself and they're walking. So it would make sense that if they're going to enter a door or go through a door that you'd want the door to open. And now that we have this capability, the trigger can be set up to where as these actors or characters walk in, the door will open as if it's us or my camera or something like that. But then we've also got custom path actors. So again, you can make a custom path and put any object on the path. So again, maybe you have, you've put a toilet on a path and it's, you know, following this path and you want the toilet to open this door as it gets close to it. Well, it will act the exact same way as if it were a character or my camera. So I like this keeping the all options on, but you know, it depends. And remember all of these options are per door. So maybe you want other doors to open and other others to close. Maybe you want the radius of some doors smaller and others larger. It's just, it's all up to you. And now delay. There's also a delay of zero seconds by default, which makes sense. It's kind of a good default. But maybe you have an animation set up to where you're going to enter this area, but you're not going to walk through the door immediately. So then at that point, maybe you are setting a custom delay there for a few seconds. And so as I walk in, nothing happens for 3.5 seconds. Okay, I mean, that, that's simple enough. So as I stand here, nothing really happens. I'll go ahead and increase this more. And we can see, you know, it's taking forever to now close. And that's just kind of the way it is. It's delaying the change of the door being open to close.
Now that we've looked at all of that, let's go ahead and put this delay back to zero and look at the next. We're looking at the side, which is in this case, it's set to right hand. And so you'll notice as I, the different options I have are right handed or left handed. And you know, let, let's see what happens when I change this from right to left. You can see that the door handle actually moves from one side to the other. And now the door opens the other direction, which is actually really helpful. And something I really do appreciate being an architect and all is that we actually see this door have in a sense a plan, a little, little opening in plan. And this is really nice. And if we go to a different view here, we go to a top view, we can actually see this and it's actually really helpful. Again, that's nice to see which way the door is opening, regardless of being in this area or not. I know this is a weird looking view. This is something I hope they change, <laughs> but it is really nice. We can, we can get that type of a look uh, with this door even in plan. So we'll go back to perspective. And again, this is just changing the left and right orientation. We can hit more and we can see the position here. This is actually really cool that we have this option as well. The position, it, whether it is inward or outward, it's basically just flipping the door. Imagine you're in Revit, you're pressing spacebar, you're flipping the door one side or the other, that kind of thing. So it, you're basically able to put the door where you want and then deal with the door individually on which direction it's facing, the door opening angle, whether it's opening in or out. And then finally, again, this angle is default at 90, makes perfect sense, but maybe you want the door to go beyond 90. You know, if you're familiar with a lot of the doors that you have in your house, they don't stop at 90 degrees. Maybe they'll stop at, you know, 130, something like this. And, you know, maybe you have a wall that is, you know, angled over here, or maybe it's not so much that it's angled, but you've got a door stop over there and you want the option of the door opening farther. It makes more sense to have the door open a little beyond 90 if you're trying to walk through it, because Walking through it here is a, a bit awkward, and let's be honest, we don't walk through doors at a 90 degrees all the time. Sometimes it's less, sometimes it's more, depending on who you are or where you're going through or what type of door it is. So it's, it's still really nice that we have this option. Again, this is per door. Moving on, we've got the width, the overall width of the door. This is default, and I believe it's default in a number in meters, which is why it looks kind of funny in feet. I have a, uh, the unit set to feet by default. But, you know, you could change this to really anything you want. And it goes up to, you know, four and a half feet, which you're not you, you're not really going to see a four and a half foot door. It's going to be very specific, especially, especially this type of door. So, you know, you're more likely to see a three foot door or something like that. And same as height. You know, I probably used to seeing like an eight foot door. And, you know, this kind of this can go up to ten and a half feet, which, you know, depends on the type of door that you have. But nonetheless, you know, you can really set really any kind of door that you want, which is nice. And then framing. Framing is set to 0%. And so this is going to be a bit difficult to explain really until I move this. And you can actually see what's happening is that the it's basically the amount of framing compared to the rest of the door panel itself. So if I put this at 100, the, the frame of the door panel is essentially the entire door, <laughs> if that makes sense. So that looks completely unnatural. And if we set it at zero, then there's basically no extra frame for the panel, the door itself. But let's go into more. And so this is where we're going to really see some value in some of the doors. And so if you are familiar with any ADA requirements, in a lot of doors, you're going to have to have a, at least a 10-inch uh, bottom rail serving as a kick plate or something like that to the point where you're not going to have someone in a wheelchair rolling through this glass. You know, you need something at the bottom. And so in this case, we actually have the option of increasing this value. And, you know, it's in a sense, it's going to be hard to tell where this needs to be if you want it to be completely precise. So if I want this to be 10 inches, you know, uh, it's going to be hard to say you're going to have to do some math because from what I can tell, it's doing a percentage of this total panel between the frame that you see here. So in the glass, it, it's again, it's going to be hard to tell, but very quickly, regardless, we can, we can go ahead and put, you know, a 10% bottom rail on it and it looks like what we would need, you know, and this is going to do wonders for making this look accurate on just a visual standpoint, but just like the bottom rail, the, the hinge or the lock side, 
it all works the same and you can adjust this however you want. And just having this flexibility is really awesome. It looks great. And I just commend them for putting this feature in. So we've looked at all the different options that we have with doors. So I first want to look at how we can make this change to multiple doors. So maybe we want to, instead of having to go through the trouble of changing this for every single door that we place, how can we put these doors together and start to adjust all these settings at once for a group of doors? So I've made previous videos on copying objects and the different options that we have with that. So I'll quickly show you what we have as far as that. So I'll click the object. And if I hold shift and move this over, you'll see my number does not increase until I have let off the mouse. And so I want to put a five foot distance and let's go ahead and make four different, four different copies here. And I'm not going to choose copy. I'm going to choose instance and I'll click. Okay. And so now we've got, you know, an obnoxious amount of these triggers <laughs> and it honestly looks kind of funny as I enter the area, you see all these doors kind of open at once, but it looks, it looks cool at the same time. So, but let, let's see here. So you'll notice as I click on this door, I'm going to change the height of this door just to be nine feet. And I'm going to hit enter. And for some reason, this takes a long time. And my guess is that it takes a long time because it is in fact updating all these doors at the same time. And so this is one of the few things I will, I will edit, but I, I can go ahead and change this from right to left. And we can see that all these doors handles will move from one side to the other. And in this case, we can clearly tell that all of these doors are linked together because it's all happening at once. And this is because I chose to, in a sense, copy all of these doors as an instance. And so they're considered to be linked or grouped together and are inheriting all the settings that I have been updating. And I'm just selecting one of them. And so they're all linked together and that's happening. So, You'll, you'll also notice that this change from right hand to left hand has yet to change. I'm still waiting for this change. I hope this is something that can be improved, but there we can see that finally they're all updated. And so I'm going to look in our objects here and you can see that they are all connected because we see all the same colors and they're functioning as basically one object with all the settings inherited from just one. So this is a great way if you know you have multiple doors that are the exact same, you want them everywhere, you can link them by copying them like that. And once we're at the point where we have these doors here and they're all clearly linked together by the colors and all of that, we can see we can break the instance if we want to disassociate them from one group. And so clearly they're all within the, gr the group with the same color. But... Now that we have it here, we can just simply start moving these around and getting them placed where we want to. We can easily rotate them and everything. We can literally put them where we need to, while at the same time being able to click on any one of these doors and changing their widths. That's going to work, which is awesome. And it's really nice that that's something that's always going to be updated because they're linked together. Now, unfortunately, from what I can tell, the only way of doing that is to copy them in that way, and then continue on by with moving them at that point. So let's say these doors are where they should be. You've put them where they need to go, and you just you realize, well, I actually need more. I need one more door. Well, I can just take any one of them and then do what we've done before, copy it as an instance, hit OK, and you'll notice it's just going to populate one more. It's going to have the same color. It's not a different color. It's not a different group, but they're still all going to be able to update all together. And that's perfect. That's what we want. In this sense, it's exactly what we want. And maybe you have multiple of these doors and this works with removing them. You can simply remove them or anything like that. So that's really nice, really helpful. So once we have all these doors, you know, we're good to go. We, you can update them in one place. It's very simple, but this doesn't deal with anything from another program. This relies on you literally going to doors and then placing them. You know, while we're doing this, we can just look at the other sliders because these are basically the exact same types of doors as well. And, you know, there's, there's a few different things that we can look at as for settings here, but in, in a sense, it's the same things. You're working with the same information, the same framing, the same everything. 
Um, of course, you've got the different styles, different casing styles. This in this in this case is because it's a slider. You've got different options here, but it's not a whole lot different than the rotating. It's doing the exact same thing. Triggers are the same here. That's all the same. That's great. Easy enough. So we're good there. It, it makes sense. Whether it's inward or outward, the translation offset, this is really nice just to show how far it's going to ultimately move. And if I move in here, it's moving a slightly less distance because I have this set. Whereas at 100, this is not going to move at all. It's just the effect and how far it's offsetting. 0% being the entire width of the door, which in most cases makes sense, makes the most sense that you would slide the length of the door. Sure, that works. So we've looked at all the settings for the different types of doors. But again, we haven't dealt with bringing in our own models, our own doors, and then changing it out because it's, you know, you want to use these doors. They're all new doors. They look nice. They function. They have all these great settings. You can animate them. It's just out of the box. It's really simple. And so how do we get these in some of our models? So I am now, I'm just going to, I'm not going to worry about this at all, but I am going to go to Revit and we're going to start to look at what we can do when we bring in our own model. So at this point, I, I just have got my model here. Not a big deal. Um, it's just a small little house. Use it in other tutorials, but we're gonna. it's got no materials, so it's going to come in gray. It's not a big deal, but we want to start to replace some of these doors with some of the new looking doors in twin motion that function and open and everything. So let's go ahead and click see in twin motion and let's see this in twin motion. And I'm just going to uh, use a new project and I will click yes and we'll just go ahead and, and receive this data. This is all going to be pulled in and my guess is that my site is in doors and everything is up here. So here it is. Here we are. I'm going to quickly replace a couple of these materials so it doesn't look completely stupid. We'll go ahead and change the glass here. That immediately looks a lot better and we're actually looking at a door in this case. So, you know, looking at a door, we want to replace this door and and we want to replace it because currently we can't walk through it. And so if I come over here and I put myself on the ground, I'm just going to smack the door. I can't walk through it. Nothing's going to happen. I've got collision that I have to deal with and everything. And so the idea is that I want to trade this door out for a twin motion door and have it function like I would want. So that's great. <laughs> So how would we do that? Well, I can come in here and I can go right click and go to replace object. And you then simply go to object door. I want this to be a basic rotating door. This is more or less a front door. So we can pick it really any one of these doors, but this one looks nice. I can choose my door and then start replacement. And as I click start replacement, nothing happens. Absolutely nothing happens. And this is this was initially infuriating when I discovered this and I realized that the replace object does not work within twin motion if this element that you're trying to replace was originally brought in through a direct link. In this case, I brought all of this model in from my Revit direct link and for some reason just I, I it beats me. It just has something to do with the way that the Direct link treats all this information. I cannot replace this. In a sense, it's not twin motion models or twin motion information, so I can't replace it. So that's too bad. But I did figure out a way around this, and it's not difficult. So now I'm now going to simply hide this, and we can collapse it all, hide it, and now my house is gone. Okay, that works. I'm still running around on a blank ground, but what I'm going to do now is go to import and I have this exact model, which is, if we go back to Revit, we can see is right here. And I've, I've clicked hit export and I'm exporting everything visible. I don't care about the textures. I'm not doing any merge. I'm a big proponent of not merging anything by family or material in this case. I've just kept the mesh as Revit standard and the rest is all fine. And so I click export. I've actually already exported this. So I'm going to go back to Twin Motion and let's import this. So I will click Import, Geometry, select my file. Here's my file. And I'm going to go to Options. And for some reason, again, Collapse by Material. No, I want to keep the hierarchy. I've done a previous video on imports, which you'll see in the cards now. That was 
it's very important to understand how you're importing things and you know what's going to happen when you choose the different settings. So I want to keep the hierarchy. And I'll show you why in just a second. So I'll click OK. It's going to import all the information. I, I don't care about any materials. We'll just use the scene material. That's fine. It's going to bring it all in. And then my house is up here once again. My house is here once again. And let's go finally at look at that door. Again, I'm going to place this glass just so it looks like glass. There's my two-sided glass. That looks good. So now we've got this door. And if you remember what the, the type of settings we were looking at last time at the hierarchy, this you'll notice it looks the exact same. And this hierarchy is what I want to keep because it allows me to select every single individual element from Revit as an instance, as the way it is. So this makes things really easy because, you know, in a sense, I can select whatever I want and replace it. So let's go ahead and see if the replace object will work now that we've imported it instead of use the direct link. So I'm gonna right click this again, choose replace object. Again, we wanna change this to a door that we like that's gonna fit a front door. This one does look pretty good. And let's go start replace. And you'll notice it worked perfectly, you know, perfectly in a sense that to the point that it did replace the material or did replace the door. So I've got a few things I need to do here. Well, I can just simply rotate things, which is, of course, not a big deal. Let's go ahead and choose the rotate here. Um, in fact, I'm going to gonna in, click that object and then this object. And let's go ahead and isolate these. Very simple right there. So I can choose this and we can really get it fitting within this door. And this really isn't that hard because I can simply choose 90 degrees right there and if you name your door correctly, which I sure hope you do in this case, you'll notice before I had a 36 by 96 door, so a three foot by eight foot door. You'll notice the default here is it's a little, it's not quite wide enough. So let's just simply change that to three feet. That'll fit the width perfectly. And then let's go ahead again and change this to nine feet. Of course it's that. And we'll go ahead and change this to eight feet. Look at that, that fits perfectly. And so again, I need to make sure I have it opening in the right direction. Okay, I'll just turn the isolate off. And I mean, let's look at the ground. Let's go to the ground here and physically walk through this door. You know, like that is exactly what we want. And we it was very simple to not only bring all of our Revit model in with the exact hierarchy, but we were able to replace the door. And so again, the really nice thing is, let's say I have all of these doors and they're just real basic interior doors. There's nothing real, really special here, but I've selected all of these doors. I even got one up there and let's go ahead and replace all of these. And so let's choose a different door, maybe just this basic door right there and replace. <laughs> there we go, very simple. And so, yes, you might notice that you're going to have to rotate these doors and deal with the widths and the heights. But, you know, from that standpoint, these doors are very easy to deal with. And it's quite simple for me to simply select the door, change this to 90 degrees, get the height correct and, you know, move on with what I'm doing. I have everything set up just like that. Now, you know, things things are a bit dicey when it comes to getting these things together if we want to change all the settings like we looked at before. And so, you know, you're tempted to want to somehow link these or group them or something, but there's not really a great way of doing that. But the best thing that I can say is that let's say we do want to universally edit all of these doors. Well, I can hold control, select all the doors, and you'll notice that some of these settings change. In this case, the width is multi and the height is multi, and it's multi because you'll notice I changed the door, this one door of my selection to a different value than the others, which is why. And so I actually still have the option of changing this, but now that once I change it, they will all be the exact same. So in a sense, you don't have to go to the trouble of copying and moving them. If they're all there, you just simply have to select them all at once and make all the edits at once. So that's another way of dealing with all the settings at once. So maybe you just want these two doors to be different or be wider or something. So change that to 3.25 and have them be wider than this door. It's just, 
anything works just like that. And so it's nice that you have the option of keeping them grouped and linked together if you're copying them around and placing them yourself. Or if you are replacing them, which is what I'll probably find myself doing, if you have them set up in this hierarchy, then every one of my doors are just going to show up right there, you know, under this particular door once I've replaced them. And then it's as simple as changing them from there and that's it. It's very simple. So that is going to do it for animation. The last thing I want to look at is introducing a custom path or a character path and having that interact with the door. It's going to be very simple to show because we have done this before. But now that we've looked at all the settings with the door, let's go ahead and add a path. So let's do path and let's do a character path. Again, this will work with the custom path because we did not uncheck that from the trigger. So I'll choose character path, look at the pen. I'll select this point, this point, and then let's just choose a point in here so that they're now walking through this door. So now we've got people walking and you'll notice as they get close to the door, at this point, mm, nothing's happening. So why is this, what, what's going on here? So let's go ahead and click on our door again. I'll go back into my behavior. I got my trigger there. Trigger type is multi. Everything looks good. My door really should be opening. This is what it's telling me that my door should be opening. So looking at this now, I can tell that my door trigger is set to multi, which means it's set to character path and custom path actors. And it does not seem to be working with these characters walking through now. I have gone to the trouble of taking this path and making it wider, increasing the density of people, doing all kinds of things with this, and the door really never opens. And I can't say that I know why. I don't know if this is a bug, but the idea is that if I have this width set up to you know something similar to the door, and I have this path, they're simply walking through the door, and the fact that they don't walk through I think is a problem. Because the idea is that they're on a character path. I have my trigger of the door set up to where they on a the characters on a path will trigger the door opening and so once they pass this blue line the door should be opening and i cannot say why i know this is not happening it doesn't make sense because in this sense you know it it doesn't seem to be working i'm not exactly sure why i can change this behavior to open or close but that doesn't mean that the you know, the, the trigger itself doesn't do anything. So like this should actually be triggering the door to open now that I put this on trigger and all I have no delays. I have, you know, the trigger radius is set up appropriately and everything is set up. So my hope is that this is actually a problem that I'm not doing something wrong, you know, for the sake of my viewers and all of you watching. But um, hopefully this is something that Twin Motion can fix if it truly is a problem. So that will do it for this. We have looked at everything with the new doors. It is really exciting to see all these new doors. There's you know, all kinds of things that you can do with this. As far as settings go, we've looked at all the settings, trigger types and everything. And the fact that we might wanna replace the settings of doors everywhere. We might wanna select multiple and change those specifically. We might wanna copy the doors around so that they're linked together. Anything like that can be done. We'll cover that in this video. If you do want to replace the object, you're going to have to use an import, like an actual model import as opposed to a direct link, which makes me really sad because I like the direct link. It's really nice and quick. But regardless, you'll have to use the import if you want to replace it. That's not the end of the world, though. So please leave a comment if I left anything out, if you have any questions on the doors or if you discovered this problem that I've had with a character path not having the door open or trigger. I, curious if you've seen the same problem so if you happen to learn something please demolish that like button really helps me out a lot also consider changing the phase of that subscribe button to existing that also helps me out so much and i thank you all who have if you lasted this long and you you're really just this interested in doors you're awesome thank you very much for watching it means so much hope to see you in the next one have a wonderful day and thanks for watching